Hi, I'm Jesse from Associated Environmental Systems. This is the first video in our salt spray series, and we're going to focus on the installation process. We will cover unpacking, power and utility requirements, nozzle assembly, ventilation, drainage, and air supply. MX Series chambers are constructed from clear lucite sheeting. It's pretty durable for testing environments, but can be damaged during shipping. Inspect the chambers for cracks. Even small cracks will spread over time, so be sure to contact AES immediately if you do find any signs of shipping damage. Place your MX chamber on a hard, level surface in an area with plenty of ventilation. Remember, this chamber's job is to create a corrosive atmosphere, so you're going to want to keep the salt spray chamber in a room with enough space and ventilation to minimize rusting its surroundings. We'll talk a little more about ventilation towards the end of the video. The chamber and the electric panels are completely wired for use. The power source must be properly grounded. The standard power requirements are listed on pages 3-1 of your MX Series user manual. All AES salt spray chambers are shipped with the atomizing nozzle installed. Nozzle replacement is as follows. First apply a quarter inch wide Teflon tape to all joints. Take care to avoid allowing any tape to enter the inside of the pipe. It is recommended that the tape be applied two or three threads back from the end of the pipe. Step two, take care to keep all foreign materials from entering the pipe and screw the short acrylic quarter inch pipe nipple into the tapped hole on the inside of the chamber. Hand tightening is all that is required. Step three, screw the salt spray nozzle to the acrylic nipple installed in step two and tighten by hand. Turn the nozzle so the spray direction is toward the front of the chamber and the other tapped hole in the nozzle points down. Step four, screw the long acrylic quarter inch threaded pipe into the tapped hole at the bottom of the nozzle until snug. This pipe is called the siphon tube. Step five, place the nylon mesh strainer over the other end of the siphon tube and hold in place with rubber bands. If the special MIL STD 202 or MIL STD 810 filter is used, attach to the end of the siphon tube. Step six, place the salt reservoir cover on the top of the salt reservoir. Untreated tap water should always be fed through a demineralizer cartridge before use by the chamber's atomizing system. You can learn more about the water demineralizer systems by clicking the link in the description below. Demineralizer systems can be purchased directly from the AES sales team and parts department. MX series chambers need to be exhausted in order to prevent back pressure within the chamber. Install a non-corrosive 3 quarter inch pipe from the chamber exhaust to a point outside the building. The outdoor end of the exhaust pipe should be shielded to avoid the effects of air currents or winds. The pipe should be kept as short as possible, as straight as possible, should slope continuously down from the chamber, and should have no liquid traps. Flexible hose should be avoided unless care is taken to ensure that it does not sag between the supports, creating a liquid trap. For lengths of over 10 feet, a two inch line should be used. If you need to pipe the exhaust to the roof, or for any other reason it is necessary to pipe upward from the chamber exhaust, use a T instead of an elbow. Orient the T so an 18 inch drop line and drain can be added to ensure that the exhaust line remains clear at all times. MX Series chambers need clean, oil-free, and regulated compressed air. The chamber has been furnished with the valve marked air at the rear end of the chamber. The compressed air requirements for the MX9200 series are as follows. That wraps up the installation video. You should be ready to begin operation, which will be the topic of our next video. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact AES directly by phone or email. I'm Jesse and thanks for watching.